When Michael Jordan played in Chicago, the crowd just went crazy to another decibel level. And I, I'd get the chills every time. He played with such a, a fury. He was electric on the court. Well, before the shrug game, the game against Portland in the NBA Finals, well, the public relations people couldn't find Michael. The reason was he was on the court taking three-point shots, and he was not noted as a three-point shooter. We asked him about it. He said, well, you know, you never know when a three-point shot might come in handy. Obviously, he had figured something out that he was going to surprise them, but you have to hit the shots. This incredible onslaught of threes takes place in the first half, and he hits six of them. That was unheard of at that time for anyone. He looks over at our broadcast table and gives that shrug. And I think what I took out of that most, it showed his humility that he could not believe that he hit six three-pointers. That was, I thought, one of the uh, uh, incredible moments in playoff history. I would have to go with Jordan as the GOAT. Playing in the NBA Finals, motivation is a given. But if bulletin board material carries weight, the Blazers have plenty. The defending champion Bulls have added their voices to a chorus casting Portland as a paper tiger with talent to burn, but unable to stick to a winning script. Now, can the Blazers shred that narrative and write their own championship chapter? A look at the beautiful fountain of the Great Lakes in Grant Park as the Bulls look to pour it on against the Blazers. Now it's time to hear the starting lineup from tonight's PA announcer, Ray Clay. player Clark Kellogg and David Aldridge I'm Kevin Hart and Mike a Blazers team that some have questioned what is their mentality well they've made it clear they're out to prove a point that they're ready for this moment and that they can deliver in the clutch and the two leading stars for these teams Clark it's Clyde Drexler and Michael Jordan their games invite comparison I think they sure do, Kevin. A lot of similarities when you look at them, from their age to the versatility and athleticism of their games. Air Jordan and Clyde the Glide, both cleared for takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> On the floor for Portland, it'll be Terry Porter and Clyde Trexor in the backcourt. Up front, Jerome Kersey is at small forward. Buck Williams at the four. 
Handling the low post is Kevin Duckworth. For the Bulls, Bill Cartwright is at the center. Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant man the front court. John Paxson is at the point. And of course, at off guard, it'll be Michael Jordan. And the Blazers certainly motivated to answer their detractors. That's a question they know can't be answered with words, but rather with their performance on the floor. Now here's Jordan. Takes the three. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. Fantastic work in the screen and roll. Jordan keeping things simple and taking what he sees. And the anticipation in this building rises as Drexler picks up Jordan. Porter against Paxson. There's the triple. Porter, no luck. And quite the Blazers like to play a much faster pace than the ball. Certainly, Kevin, they will be looking to push the tempo. You can count on that. And that could help them with their execution, in my mind. Much simpler pushing the ball with a numbers advantage than going against the set half-court defense. Ah, great scouting report. Mike, one thing with this matchup, Terry Porter has really struggled against the Bulls in the past. Definitely not a good sign for the Blazers. Porter is one of their most important players. They need him to come up big in this series. And here's Porter following the three-pointer by Michael Jordan. Spins. Porter inside. Guarded by Paxson. It's deflected. A true anchor. Hotright shows quick reflexes to come away with that block. They get it again. Outside for Jordan. Picked by Cartwright for three. Tying an NBA Finals record in a hand. Michael Jordan with his third three. Providing an early lift for the Chicago Bulls. And one thing the Bulls have been relying on is Jordan scoring Clark in the post. That's been a bit of a surprise tactic for them in the playoffs and it's paid dividends. More and more, they're setting up Jordan on the block. We'll see if they stick with that tonight. And that one's good by Porter. And in my mind, the most fascinating individual matchup in this series is Drexler going up against Michael Jordan. Jordan's going to have his work cut out on the defensive end. Yeah. A four three-pointer falls for Jordan. The NBA Finals record is six. He's knocking on the door and getting oh so close. Drexler drawing the double team. Chicago foul. Horace Grant. First personal foul. First team foul. Pass to Porter. Over Paxson. And there's Porter on the assist by Drexler. Porter's got five points so far. Just reflexive shooting by Porter. The ball comes his way, and he knows exactly what to do with it. And Mike, after his poor shooting night last time out, everyone wondering how Michael Jordan will respond tonight. Well, Kev, we'll see very shortly. Sometimes that only helps to fire him up. Opponents are scared of Jordan coming off a bad game. He goes out there trying to prove himself all over again. And usually is successful. And here's Jordan outside. Jordan can't get that one to fall. Trailblazers trail by seven. Duckworth kicks to Porter. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It's going to be on Michael Jordan. An efficient shooter like Porter is such a valuable asset on offense to me. If he can't find a shot for a teammate, he's got one of his own that he can load and launch. So for the Bulls, Williams, he's checked in for Cartwright. Livingston comes in for Horace Grant. Armstrong subbed in for Paxson. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. And guys, there was talk coming into the series that it could be the Blazers' last shot at a title with this roster. You know, Mike, they're an aging team, so that's a valid question or concern. I mean, you look at Drexler, Williams, Porter, Kersey, all right around 30. When those are your core guys, the window does start to close in a little bit. From deep, Jordan. That doesn't go either for Jordan. Trailblazers trail by five. Porter kicks to Ainge. Good, and a nice assist from Porter. A fantastic shooter from outside. Ainge especially likes taking these corner three balls. Portland foul. 
And Portland yeah. making a change here. Max checked in. First team foul. First team foul. Off the inbound pass. And the Bulls with another miss. He just can't seem to get anything to go. He's in a bit of a rut. He's got to simplify things on offense. Concentrate on getting quality looks and not settling for bad shots. Robinson passes to Beck. Five on the clock. Here's Ainge. Can't tie it up as that one's no good. It's actually hard to believe it. Since their title in 1978, the Blazers have only missed the playoffs once. How about consistency there? Unfortunately, they're still looking for that second championship ring. You know, Portland hasn't been at their best when the stakes are high. Maybe this is the year they finally get to raise the trophy again. Here's Pat. He's covered by Armstrong. And it's Pat missing. Got it off in time. He's off on that one. And still a close game as the first quarter comes to a close. It's the Bulls. They lead by two. We'll get things started in the second quarter when we return. We welcome you back for the second quarter of Game 1 of the NBA Finals. Tremendous action so far between the Bulls and the Trailblazers. Portland trailing here. And the Bulls not going to Jordan in the post as much as we've seen Clark throughout these playoffs. And Kevin, that might be by design. I mean, the Bulls have sent MJ into the post so many times. This might be a little wrinkle that Phil Jackson has in store for the Blazers. Yeah, that's a good point. That wouldn't surprise me. Grant is out there with Williams. And it's Michael Jordan. Then there's Pippen. And it's Armstrong in at the one. That's the Bulls five as we get into the second quarter. Here's Robinson. Another shot. And he sinks the layup. Robinson's got his first bucket in this one getting aggressive and creating a second chance opportunity. Exactly what coaches want to see. Jordan outside. Off target from three-point range. And he just can't get anything to fall right now. That's a shot he should make with ease. Instead, he clanks it. And Robinson throws it down. Way to set up the alley-oop. Oh, the catch and flush. If they can come all the way back, we'll remember that one. And with Jordan leading, that triple gives Jordan five. Michael Jordan is just one three-pointer away from an NBA Finals record. Drexler passes to Duckworth. And a great assist by Drexler as that one goes in. Drexler's got three assists in the game. And a great job to get that angle on a tremendous drop. He made that drive look easy, but that had a high degree of difficulty. From deep, Jordan rebounded by Duckworth. And when we talk about Jordan, we're talking about a man, Clark, in the prime of his career. At the very top of his game. Yeah, one of the best we've ever seen, Kevin. I wouldn't doubt the Larry O'Brien trophy lives in the Bulls trophy case for a few more years. I mean, the Blazers might not want to hear that, but it could very well happen. Williams, a screen on Drexler. Jordan with another miss. Trailblazers leading by three. And right away, we can see the one-on-one -on -one battle bike between Jordan and Drexler is going to take center stage. And not in the way Clyde wanted. Jordan's been toying with him. If this is how their matchup is going to go, the Blazers are in trouble. Big trouble. Hey, this is a pretty funny story, you think about it. After Chicago drafted Jordan in 1984, he flew into town, but they didn't have anybody at the airport to pick him up. A chauffeur at the airport recognized him and offered him a ride. I bet you the Bulls figured out how to take better care of Jordan after that. From deep, Jordan, they get it back. Williams kicks to Jordan. Screened by Grant. Here's the three. Rebounded by Duckworth. Duckworth's got his seventh rebound here tonight. It's hard to believe the Bulls wouldn't be prepared to greet the number three overall pick, Mike. I've never heard of that before. Well, it worked out well for this chauffeur, though. 
Jordan appreciated it so much that he hired him as his personal assistant. And he still got the job. A good deed rewarded. Couldn't that be you and I, Kev? We could be driving him around. And while we have a chance, let's send it over to David Aldridge, courtside. Thanks, guys. In this series, of course, everyone's looked forward to that head-to-head -head matchup between Michael Jordan and Clyde Drexler. Now, Jordan's defense is going to be a key role, maybe more so than it was in their last series. Cleveland's backcourt doesn't have the firepower that Drexler brings, and it's Jordan's job. Tying the NBA Finals record, Michael Jordan with an exceptional display of shooting. That was his sixth three-pointer in this game. So timeout called here, the first for Portland. Chicago making some changes. Kings checked in for Williams. Livingston comes in for Horace Grant. And it's Paxson in for Armstrong. Portland also making some changes. Buck Williams, he's checked in for Bryant. Kersey comes in for Robinson. And Porter subbed in for Pack. And so it's Porter bringing it up now for the Portland Trailblazers. Only given up six here in this quarter. Here's Drexler. No good that time. So the Bulls will take it the other way. Jordan inside. He's against Drexler. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Chicago shooting their first free throws of the night. Free throw good, Jordan. You know, there's so much that's amazing to me about Jordan, but his endurance stands out. He consistently gets stronger, it seems, as the game goes on. The Trailblazers making a switch here. Ainge is checked in. Fires from deep. Chicago grabs the miss. Jordan down low. Ainge covering. And they call the foul. So he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. The Bulls have had two chances at the line already, making them both. Here's Ainge. Coach, I'm sure they'd like to take advantage of the two-for-one opportunity right now. Absolutely, but the top priority is getting a good look at the basket. You got it. Now here's Williams. Guarded close. Just five to shoot. From deep. The shot by Ames. No good. Here's Jordan. And he converts the layup. And now it's a three-point Bulls lead. You know, this is why Jordan is such an effective scorer. Picks his spots really well inside. Here's Ainge. Buries it from three-point range. Ainge has got six points. Chicago doing a nice job moving the ball, finding good shooting opportunities, and exploiting the weaknesses of the defense with really on-target, on-time passing. And so it's Michael Jordan making things happen for Chicago. He's at the quarter century mark, 25 points for him in this game, as they have looked to him over and over to make things happen. And don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome into the third quarter here in Chicago, folks. The Bulls in pursuit of their second consecutive NBA title. A win here in game one would go a long way toward making that happen. And it's the Trailblazers with the ball. And I don't know how Michael Jordan can follow up that performance in the first half. But we'll find out. On the court for the Trailblazers, Duckworth is out there with Williams. Then there's Kersey. Then it's Drexler. And it's Porter and at the point guard position. Lock at six. Puts the move on. The Trailblazers need to get off a shot. Kersey misses. One of the great halves in NBA history, Clark, shattering some league records in the process. And you know what, Kevin Portland's got to be terrified. I mean, we thought his wrist might affect him. Instead, Jordan looks now like he's never been better. He's incredible. Pass to Drexler. Drexler drawing the double team. On the wing, Porter. Guarded by Paxson. Back to Drexler. Good, and a nice assist from Porter. Drexler's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. 
How about this, guys? If the Blazers had taken Jordan in that 84 draft, their backcourt could have been MJ and Clyde the Glide Drexler. How about that for a two -seat? With energy and anticipation at playoff levels, I'd expect there might be a little more up and down transition basketball. Williams passes to Drexler. Drexler drawing the double team. Porter against Paxson. Kersey with the screen on Paxson. Back to Drexler. Launches it. And that one is off. Good D by Jordan. Mike, the 84 draft is rehashed and looked at from every way, but it is scary to think, isn't it, about that guard combination in Portland had they drafted Michael Jordan. Well, the West had so many strong centers back then. Boy, you can't blame Portland for taking a big. But it would have been a lot of fun, Kev, to see MJ and Drexler team up. For future Hall of Fame. Drexler drawing the double team. Porter against Paxson. Now Porter. He's got seven. They double him with Jordan. And that's out of bounds. It was last touched by Drexler. Just not on the same page right there. Not sure what he was trying to do with that pass. Chicago making some changes. Williams, he's checked in for Cartwright. Hansen comes in for Pippen. And B.J. Armstrong has subbed in for John Paxson. And Portland with a change here, too. Ryan, he's checked in for Duckworth. And the Bulls have talked a lot about the Blazers being soft late in games. It will be interesting to see how they respond if a game gets tight. You expect to get two points there. A little unlucky for them. Here's Jordan. Not wasting any time and taking the shot and knocking it down. The mid-range is more or less wide open for Jordan. It's a go-to scoring area for him. And it was surprising, wasn't it, Clark, to see how open Phil Jackson was in criticizing the trailblazers. A little bit, but Phil is not known to bite his tongue, and as a player, that could eat at you a little bit, and perhaps the team as well. Opponents can criticize your system, but start calling guys weak mentally, and that can really strike a nerve. I agree. The defense couldn't collapse quickly enough. The Bulls leading by three, and the matchup between Jordan and Drexler. Mike is not going how the Blazers wanted it to. This could be a long series for Drexler. Jordan's not one to let up when he's got to die on the ropes. Yep. Knocked loose. Here we go, one-on-one. -on -one. Plays it up and banks it in. Jordan's got 31 points. I'll tell you what, Jordan's such a strong defender. Outstanding at reading the opposition and pouncing on those steals. Drexler scanning the floor. Drexler drawing the double team. He lobs it up. Percy taking things into his own hands with that alley -oop. Lob it his way and he's going to make it happen. And Drexler over to help. Jordan dishes to Williams. Let's it go from 14. And the Bulls tack on two more. There are very few players who can slow a score of his caliber down. the fast break. Jordan leading the way over Drexler. Shot and game clock separated by five. Porter pulls it in. Trailblazers trail by seven. Come to me, come to me. Kicks it out to Drexler. Back to Porter. Wants it go with a three. Here's Williams, and some nice defense there to end the quarter. And so is Chicago, bringing the quarter to a close with a seven-point lead. A good size advantage, and they'll look to increase it right back after this break. Welcome back as we get set for the fourth quarter action here in game one of the NBA Finals. Portland and Chicago both trying to jump out to an early lead in this series.
Bulls leading by seven. And guys, I don't think there's a better crowd in sports than this Bulls crowd. They can make it deafening in here. They've got John Batson. King is up there with Livingston. Then it's Pippen, and it's Jordan in at the shooting guard position. So that's the five in the game for Chicago. Porter passes to Ainge. Duckworth sets a screen. Back to Porter. Let's the three fly. It's hauled in by the bull. Pippen's got his fifth rebound in this one. And when you've got a crowd this enthusiastic Clark and a player as exciting as Michael Jordan, that is a pretty potent combination. Combustible is a word that comes to mind. <laughs> really a match made in heaven. I mean, MJ feeds off of that energy of the crowd. And when he needs a boost, they give it to him. And vice versa. All right, let's go to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Thank you, Kevin. The Bulls had a hard road to these finals. They played a tough seven-game series against the Knicks in the second round, and then had to play six games with Cleveland. The Blazers, on the other hand, cruised through the first two rounds before dispatching the Jazz in six to reach the finals. We'll see if fatigue becomes a factor as this series plays out. Back to you guys. Usually it's a factor some way, David. Thank you for the report. Mike, is there a chance the Bulls begin to wear down at some point in this series? Let's face it, they're tired. Every starter except Jordan is scoring below his regular season average. But the Bulls are a tough, proven champion. They'll find the energy when they need to. And for all the talk of the Blazers' tendency to self-destruct late in games, this is a team with plenty of playoff experience. Here's Robinson. Doesn't get it to drop for him. And the Bulls going the other way now. Here's Jordan. And Jordan throws it down. Another night, another electric performance by Mike. Where does it end? And you talk about the Blazers' playoff experience part. It's up and down the bench. You're right, Kevin. It's not just the four guys. I mean, they've got players like Ainge, Cooper, Buck Williams. I mean, these guys are veterans with years of postseason games under their belts. King, the pass to Jordan. And they double up Jordan. Back to King. Good, and it's Jordan picking up the assist. And the Bulls lead by 15. Their offense has really stood out. They're piling up the points and torching this defense. I like how under control they've been on offense. Keeping things simple and running their plays well. Time called here. The Blazers decide to talk it over. Here is Porter. And here is Ainge. The pass to Williams. It's hauled in by Pippen. Pippen's got rebound number seven for him tonight. And so it looks like the Bulls will retain possession here. Excellent anticipation there on the defensive end. Almost got the steal. Yeah, can't be loose with the ball around him. Will Purdue's checked in for the Bulls. And over two and a half minutes in the books here in the fourth. Cartwright, the pass to Jordan. And it's Jordan with the jam. And, you know, their lead just continues to grow. And it's not just because of their offense. They're getting it done in both ends. Yeah, their defense has been stellar as well. Great work on both ends. Porter passes to Robinson. To halt the run. No good on that one. Some solid defense from Pippen. And here's Jordan. He'll bring it up for the Chicago Bulls. 17-point lead, their biggest. Six to shoot. From deep three-point range. And it's Portland with the rebound. 
127 left in the fourth quarter of this one. Robinson. The basket is good yeah. off the assist from Williams. Superb vision that time by Williams. And they double up Jordan. Purdue the pass to Jordan over Porter. And the Bulls tack on two more. Well, you know, I hesitate to never say never, but I don't think there's really enough time for a comeback to happen. It's a sizable lead, and it may get even bigger. Passes it to Porter. Over Purdue. Porter, no luck. Tried to lean his body to create space, but that also increased the degree of difficulty. Up top, Jordan. Ainge covering. Jacks up a three. Porter gets the rebound. Defense got all kinds of fortunate right there. Usually he takes full advantage of that situation. I'm sure he'll take another shot at it if they keep giving him openings. The basis of our game is the pass. Share it. Being a great team. And slam dunk by Jordan. You know, once Jordan makes his move to the basket, he has no intention of stopping, which makes it hard to slow his progress. Here's Porter. Nice shot from 10 feet out. 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here is Paxson. And with this victory, the Bulls stand just three wins away, Mike Fratello, from their second consecutive title. And it looks like they are determined to make that happen. Michael Jordan's got one finger on the trophy already. And you know the Chicago crowd will be ready, Clark, for game two. This building will be rocking. No question about it, Kevin. It will be a great atmosphere, but don't count the Blazers out now. There are still three games ahead in Portland. And that building has its own set of problems for the opposition. Well, you've played there. No one should know better than you. Yeah, it's a tough spot. Great fans, but they're hard on the opponents. So for Mike Fratello, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, and our entire 2K crew, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching this 2K sports presentation of the NBA. We'll see you later.